double thumbs up. There we go. Okay. Good morning. Welcome to the Board of County Commissioners meeting. Hopefully everyone slept with all the banging going on last night. Um, as always, we'd like to start with a prayer, a reading or a thought, and the Pledge of Allegiance. And uh, if there are any, any volunteers who would like to participate with this by offering one of those, if you'd just raise your hand. See there? Okay, we got the prayer then. <laughs> Pledge, okay, very good. Andrew. We're thankful for the life that we have and the opportunities which we have. We're thankful for this country and the opportunity we had to celebrate Independence Day. We pray that we will remember those principles that have kept our country strong. Again, we're thankful for all that we have and pray for thy guidance and pray for safety. And we say this to the Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Well, as always, every Every month, we get the opportunity and privilege to to uh, showcase an employee of the month, and this month it is Katie Fox. Katie, <laughs> come on up. You can you can stand there. We'll give you. I get to read this, and then you can okay. say anything you'd like to afterwards, if you'd like to. Okay. All right. Um, says, there is says, there was no better choice for employee of the month than Katie Fox, victim coordinator for the Utah County Attorney's Office. She is undeniably one of the most devoted employees in the office and has been for the past nine years. As the second largest prosecu prosecuting office in the state, we deal with hundreds of cases per month. Despite only having a budget of one and three, quarter, and three quarter victim coordinators, our office has smartly entrusted Katie Fox as the point person in our victim coordinator responsibilities. She is especially passionate about helping children who have been victimized and, and it shows. She will get down on her hands and knees and play Barbie, Zoom, Hot Wheels, around the car, around, around around on the carpet or play endless games of checkers. Do you win or do you lose? You always lose. <laughs> you always lose? <laughs> That's just the rule, right? <laughs> um, anytime, any, anytime a child needs to be in court, Katie will cancel everything to be there to support them. When Katie comes into the office early or stays unexpectedly late, she always needs to rearrange childcare for her own children. She, she never seems annoyed or inconvenienced. She seems happy to do, do it because she knows she's serving others. Katie is also the first person to volunteer to help in, in a meeting or run a document over to the court when needed. She doesn't even seem to think about herself, only others. Katie's compassionate, compassion is noticeable in, in the way she connects with victims. She tries to take, she, she takes the time to talk to them, not only about their criminal the criminal case, but their life in general. She has a deep desire to help alleviate suffering and will go out of her way to help. Katie is someone we look up to and strive to be more like in our professional careers. And I'm gonna leave this with you, but thank you. Thank you for all that you do, especially for helping out some of the most vulnerable in our, in our society, so thank you. Thank you. Come on up. Wait, wait, do you have anything to say? I mean, I just have a team of amazing people behind me. It's not just me. So the victims in our county are well served from all of our office. But. Very good. Well, we've got this little plaque, this little plaque for you. And some you, goodies you have in to here. Come, on come, up. On, come up here. You, pick, you can come here. 
then your picture will be in the newsletter if I ever write my article for this month. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. There's this. No. Pull that front side out, and he'll take a picture this way. <laughs> Surprise, he, he texted her to do it. Oh, yes. And by the way, before you leave, <laughs> tonight at, we're starting at 7, seven o'clock, uh, we have our domestic violence uh, meeting down in Spanish Fork at the High Chaparral. Is it still there at that? Is yep. it there? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we'd love to have anyone who'd like to come to that as that's one of our initiatives this year as a commission. We're going every other month approximately with uh, just shining some light on, on, this, on this issue and how it affects uh, the county. So thank you for coming. And if you can come down there, please do so. Give a minute for the mass exodus there. Okay. I'm sure on there's our, a joke there about a whole bunch of attorneys leaving the room, right? <laughs> All right. On our consent agenda, uh, we have 15 items. And there was only one that I had a question on. It was just a, maybe a simple question on number four. Does that agreement, does it, um, does it require a county match? Oh, it does not. Okay, that's all I needed. Unless, unless somebody else wanted to hold that, okay. Um, other than that, the only one I'd recommend is that we uh, continue number 15 for one week as there's no documentation there. Uh, on consent, I've got number two will need to strike. Uh, there was a change in that, and so we will be seeing that in the near future, but we'll need to strike number two on consent. Let's see, that one is TJC. Okay. TJC. Okay, I'm fine with that. You're fine with that too, Commissioner? Yep. Okay. And then on number nine, I believe we typically ask them to come back and report yep. on the success of that. I, you know, I thought about that one on this one here. I'm not sure. I mean, it's, I mean, we can. And that's, um, we've just done that for everything. We've yeah, for. maybe we should be consistent it with It seems like that's $65 rental. Yeah, I mean, it's not a yeah. huge one, but. So we can, if you prefer to do that. And then I did have a question on number 11. Circle number 11. So, so Richard on number nine, if you'd follow up with that. Okay. Okay, we'll circle number nine, or 11, sorry. Any others? Okay. Okay, on to our regular agenda. Everything will go on to consent except for what we pull off. Um, if we could, and these would be to either approve, ratify, or wherever the case may be, adopt. Um, we could hold number two, number four, and number five. Okay. Any others? Okay. With that then, all the rest of them will go to the consent agenda. Let's go back to number 11. And <clears throat> I'd anticipate, Richard, this would just be a, a hopefully a fairly simple question. Uh, as we read through this, obviously this appears to be something that we'll need to take action on. Yes. Uh, my biggest question here was how much time do you anticipate this will give us before we have to do some type of major overhaul? Is this a six month patch? Is it a year patch? Uh, that's a little bit of a difficult question to, to answer it. Could it, it. What we have is the, the anode protection that's in the ground. Um, to my knowledge, we've never changed them in the 30 years. They've, they've lasted the 30 plus years the tanks have been in the ground. Um, having said that, our tanks are um, still tanks that are 
presumably the oldest in the tank in the state from what the state has told us. Um, so this will continue to protect the tanks, give us a few more years to, to decide what we want to do with the tanks themselves, whether we decommission those or replace them, um, depending on, on whether we stay at that site or, or move to a different site. Mm -hmm. Some of those decisions can be made before we look at the, the expense of actually going in. Um, decommissioning the tanks, we're looking at 150 to $200,000, replacing them, we're in the 450 to $500,000 range. Uh, so what this does is it gets us that time to be able to look at those decisions and, and make the appropriate decisions on there. If we go back in with, with um, similar still facilities in the ground, these anodes would still be able to function in that capacity for the whatever we put in the ground. So. Okay, so or, or if it moves. Aren't, aren't these the same kind of tanks, though, that the federal government required all the commercial stations to take out? Oh, yeah, they've been out for a long time. Yeah, so the government's <laughs> the one that got exempted um, yes yeah. so we're yeah. trying to fix yeah, it. most most well all of the new tanks are a, a fiberglass dual dual hole tank uh, these are the old steel tanks that went in the ground back in the 80s and, so. and, and these these anodes they can be used either here or if they were going somewhere else as well I don't think they could be relocated but they could if we if we do anything new in the ground at that site they could be reused there yeah okay so I guess the question is is when we'll have a report back from our uh oh my gosh our architect yep in the next 30 to 45 days yep is this something that can't wait 30 to 45 days so we can have that discussion because if they my, can't be reused the 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 way i understand it is that the the last test of, of the anodes it failed uh, so we don't have the anode protection in there which can cause the tanks to deteriorate a lot quicker uh, even if we do move to a different site, these will still need to be, the tanks will still need to be in service for the next year and a half to two years. Okay. So. Okay. That, that works. Yep. Thank you. I'll move that we uh, authorize the commission chair to sign agreements with MN and uh, Kafedic as stated in consent agenda item number 11. Second. I've got a motion and a second. I think it's appropriate to note that um, that we did reach out for, for three bids on that, but they were the only one that came back, but we did go through that process. So I do have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 That passes 3-0. Okay, number two. Just kind of give us an overview and I did have the opportunity to sit and watch this whole discussion at Planning Commission. It was well, that's right. You're quite well inviting. <laughs> versed in this one, then. Uh, this is Bryce Armstrong, Community Development. Uh, if you recall, uh, a couple months ago, the County Commission referred back to the Planning Commission a proposed ordinance <clears throat> that would allow basically a, a agricultural repair uh, business to be located as a permitted use in the, in the residential agricultural zone. And so what uh, currently the only zones that we allow any type of vehicle repair are in our uh, neighborhood commercial or industrial zone and our uh, highway services zone. And so we took a look at this and uh, created a, a proposed ordinance that does um, place this as a permitted use uh, in the uh, RA5 zone uh, strictly for agricultural type vehicles and or equipment. Um, We've uh, gone through different sections of the ordinance and uh, proposed amendments that would uh, address parking. Uh, we created a whole uh, section of uh, specific requirements for this type of use in our Chapter 3 section of the land use ordinance. We've also provided the opportunity for someone who has less than five acres uh, to have uh, the opportunity to utilize this business um, down to about three acres in our RA5 zone. Currently, the, the minimum lot size for a home is five acres, but we do have a lot of non-conforming uh, homes on less than five acres and so we've uh, provided that clause in there and um, I think that's about it we did uh, provide a couple definitions of agricultural uh, equipment and vehicles uh, loosely based on uh, state definitions um, the Planning Commission did uh, suggest a couple changes from the pro uh, original proposal and I can kind of highlight those uh, in the red line version that I gave you and so if you have specific questions we can kind of well, but their reasoning on some of them didn't make sense to me. One of the reasons that they wanted a shorter timeline and stuff like that was like they said, uh, 
we don't want these things parked in front of houses like this. And I think they were applying this to subdivision types. And again, we're talking the RA5 zone, five acre lots. And then the other one that bothered me during the discussion was when they limited to a 40 foot trailer. And I'm like, 20, well, 20. I think it was a 20. But the discussion was 40, like they w went back and forth. And I'm still like, even at 40, you got farm equipment. I'm, I'm Again, if we're trying to take care of farm equipment, why we would limit that as far as that length, you know? Sure. So a couple things on that. Um, the first item that Commissioner Graves was mentioning refers to the amount of time that a vehicle can be stored on the property while it's being repaired. Uh, repaired. I think that uh, the, the intent of that is to kind of prevent these type of uh, uses from becoming some type, you know, unsightly and more of a, a storage, a salvage yard. And so I, I think that, that the intent was to require that a vehicle that's stored on the property be uh, repaired and moved on, moved back to the property, uh, owner's property within six months was what we had originally uh, recommended. And then the uh, planning commission recommended to shorten that to 90 days. I think I forgot the word days in your red line version, but uh, so that was uh, one recommended. Uh, and, and that was my problem is, uh, is I'm not a farmer, but I have family who are, and there are times that it takes parts 60 sure. days to get here. And so that was kind of my, my, you know, and I appreciate the planning commission, their debate. I know it wasn't a unanimous in that. Yeah, but. yeah. So that's why staff kind of felt well. You know, six months seemed reasonable, but sure. obviously it's uh, you know subject to to review there. Uh, let me just highlight the other uh, changes specifically from the planning commission meeting, and then answering any questions you might have. If you go back to uh, on the red line version under the definition section, two dash two dash a, under our uh, definition for a farm or uh, agricultural vehicle subsection b. It reads, a vehicle or semi-tractor or an attached trailer which complies with the requirements of Utah Code Title 441 uh, Motor Vehicles Act for registration and licensing in which the primary use is for transporting livestock, harvest, harvested crops, farm supplies, and then this is where the changes come. Um, it, 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 the Planning Commission proposes it to read feed and then strike out uh, the portion that says, but does not include the operation of trucks by commercial processors of agricultural products and complete that uh, definition with and other agricultural products. I think the concern was was the I think the example was given of uh, Shepherd's Eggs, who's got these larger transport uh, trucks, and they did not want to be prohibited from being uh, able to be worked on in these type of facilities. And so we felt that the Planning Commission felt that if we struck that out and just said finished that with saying that these vehicles need to be used for for agricultural uh, uses and hauling of agricultural products. So that's one change from the Planning Commission meeting. Um, the other change, I think we just, uh, or there's two other changes, uh, Commissioner Graves referenced. Uh, part of this, uh, if you go to the red line version under home occupation, part of this uh, ordinance amendment also addresses our general home occupation section of the ordinance. Previous to this proposal, the only way a, a person can go in and, and do these type of uh, <coughs> repairs is to have a home occupation and go out and do mobile service. So they have a, a home office in their uh, home and they go to the, the, the farmer's uh, property and do the repair on site. Um, part of that service allowed a, a vehicle and also a trailer to go out and, and conduct this uh, service. And so to facilitate uh, someone either having a home occupation as part of this type of proposed business or just a home occupation in general, we propose to lengthen um, or extend the, uh, the rating or the size of a, of a truck that's associated with a, a home occupation um, for uh, agricultural business and also ex uh, ex extend the uh, length of the trailer. Previously it was 25 feet and it went up to 40 feet. The vehicle rating was a, a one ton and it's gone up to a class seven rating. We've Which talked it about, is. We talked with our public works department and they felt that uh, you know a, a seven dump truck is included, right? A dump truck would be included in a class seven. Thank you. And then the uh, last change uh, was in the text of three fifty one, which uh, we just discussed about the the number of days that a uh, or the time frame a vehicle can be on site being. Uh, repaired. So uh, there's a lot in there. Uh, if you have any questions, we can kind of address 
specific, specific sections of the ordinance. Planning Commission did, I get, uh, again, recommend approval for this with those changes. A couple questions for you that I have that, on the uh, parking spaces. I know that you have in there um, parking spaces for one outside. You know, there has to be a, a parking space for anybody that's outside of, you know, that comes in like uh, an employee of some sort. Outside employee, correct. What, what, what does a parking space mean? So our, our, or, our ordinance defines a parking space by actual space. Like, I think it's nine and a half by 18. Like, and so you'd have to have a designated. Um, we dirt, don't, we don't. Uh, over there? <laughs> yeah, we, we. Identified, yeah. In identified. the county, we've always kind of uh, had it, you'd have to define. I mean, there's a, under our, our parking section, there is a, a layout plan you have to show that our public works department looks at. Um, and certain uses have required all surface which, which can include uh, uh, gravel, all weather, yeah. sorry, all weather uh, surface. <laughs> all surface. Does include gravel. <laughs> yes, you okay. understand that. So, yeah, uh, that would really be subject to our definitions in Chapter uh, 2 so and 3. Would you have a problem if under D2 we just stopped at one trailer and took out the length? Um, I, I guess maybe I can uh, ask Peggy to see what type of ho other home businesses we have and I think what we're, the balance we're trying to strike here is obviously this is still a, a residential zone, and so you, know, you want to respect uh, that component of the zone. But the one thing I liked of their discussion was <clears throat> that uh, they brought up is, again, if we're, tr if we're trying to help, why we would limit a trailer uh, only because, uh, again, the time, I, I get it, but their reasoning was to not block another person's access. Well, that's, that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking, you know, generally areas of, I know we have non-conforming lots, but they've been there for hundred years or whatever in a lot of cases. I guess the question I have is, we've already limited it to certain size and, and as far as what can tow and what can or cannot be, so why would we limit the size of a trailer? Again, if we just wanted to get the job done, not be an eyesore, get in and get out. That's really what we're trying to do, right? So why would we limit them, I guess is the question. Sure, and I, I guess what we were looking at is trying to get the, the minimum size trailer that would provide the opportunity for someone who does have an ag repair service to go out and, and do the job. And we, we do have one person who would like to utilize this that seemed to indicate that that was a, a sufficient length, but uh, I, I don't necessarily know There's of specific concerns about it. There's a lot of farm equipment parked by Judd Harward's home that's exceeding 40 feet that if you had a repair business and needed to go get it on a trailer and bring it, you would need a bigger than a 40 foot trailer. Sure, and, and I, I don't, that's how I'm looking at it. And I guess I'm, I'm not familiar with what the maximum size of a, of a trailer would be, you know, and so you sometimes want to put a cap on it. Um, okay. But with the class seven rating vehicle, <laughs> I mean, we've given them the vehicle, now we're basically saying, oh, by the way, go, you know, go get you a snowmobile trailer that holds two snowmobiles. That, that's what it feels like to me, that's the equivalent. Sure. Oh, anyway. Sure. I, I don't think we'd have a, a strong uh, opposition to that, so. I agree with that, too. Um, on the, on the uh, talking about the home occupation, on a, on a, it looks to me like it conflicts a little bit if you look at uh, E. Um, it says in, it's conducted entirely by family members residing, uh, and yet, we're giving parking spaces for outside employment. So does that conflict or not? No, because this is under the general home occupation business. And what we're saying here is if you uh, have a, a home occupation that is not having a, a full-blown repair service, you're just having the mobile service portion okay. of it, then you can utilize that subsection okay. B. All right. I just, well, as I was reading down sure. through that, I was no, like, I, hmm, that and, then, and it kind of goes along the same lines with uh, um, with I kind of concerned me a little bit too. Uh, it does not create any odors, smoke, dust, heat, fumes, <laughs> light, glare, sounds, noise, vibrations, radio interference, you know, it, with television and stuff. I, I don't know how you can get a grinder out there and be grinding <laughs> some welding down or without creating some sort of noise. I, I just don't know how that or your welding and you can see welding going on for miles, you know, with this. And the dust, and technically the standard of county roads, we create a lot of dust on most of our roads just, just by driving. That, I don't know how you can actually, 
you'd be out of conformance the whole time as you're trying with, to work with the, the repair service or just other home occupations well no i'm talking about with the repair service sure. i just don't know how that that and happens think, sure peggy licensed so, lots of these so i'll let her so i i understand it's just a little confusing we're, we're talking about apples and oranges here the home occupation section is just for home occupation that's for you to have a business an office within your home and we are allowing these people to have also a mobile business and so okay, that's so you're separating that's the exclusive from the, exclusive the from, from the ag repair business the ag repair business oh. is something totally different so okay. you have to kind of okay. separate those two so as long as you got your the next one i was looking at was k as long as you got your flammables i mean you got your welding torch all that kind of stuff out there you can't have it in your home in your garage well, basically, is, if, if, if it's a home occupation, then these are the limits to the home occupation. Okay. So, but, but if, if you need to weld for your ag business and you've got proper approvals from us and from fire building, then you're good to go because that, that is, you know, that's a different, um, a different category than a home occupation. So you really have to separate the two. So if it's just a home occupation, a mobile business, what they have on their truck, they can do, but they can't weld outside because we don't allow the outside use for a home occupation. We're talking about something that's happening within the home. But you can go to to John Smith's farm and you can do some outside welding there if he needs, you know, something has broken. Okay. Okay. That, that, that I'm, I'm, I'm understanding that now, that separation between the home and then the business part of it that we're talking about. There was some language, and I'll see if I can find it, where it says that everything has to be met. Um, where was that? Um, there was language saying that everything has to be met below, and yet I didn't know if everything. Let's see. I should mark it. The market parking spaces. Well, maybe just in general, since I can't find it, there is. Um, How, how does this affect any other groups on a on a on a countywide basis? Do we any have any negative effects? I think you're talking uh, about 351C4. The structures shall all meet build, all building, all fire, all health code. Is that one? I don't remember it being that far down. Um, well, maybe it's under seven. C. Uh, a non-complying structure or non-conforming. Use of land may be expanded only if the zoning administrator approves the expansion after making the following findings. No, that's it. It might be down down there. Anyway, the language um, is it going to have any any ripple effects that you see or foresee that where where it's going to affect any other business out there in the way of trying to conform to it, or maybe it's implied that they need to conform to it. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think it's implied that this type of use. Is, is really a commercial use and so you're you're having clientele come and you're having certain activities that we we're not doing a commercial about. well we're, we're doing we're a commercial as a permitted use in the ra5 zone independent from a home occupation right and so obviously that type of use is going to have to meet building and fire code for those activities that are going on inside their building the the only thing that we um i guess a little bit of pushback we got was that we did notify uh, adjacent cities in the South County area to kind of get their feel on this. And two cities responded, uh, Santa Clint City and Payson City. And they're, they considered this a, a commercial use. And so they were concerned about um, potentially bringing in this that would be somewhat non-conforming to what they see in a, in a residential or I guess they don't have the agricultural component as much as we do in the county. And so there were some concerns about the compatibility of this type of use once it's annexed into a city in, 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 a, in a residential setting. Hmm. So um, that was that concern there, so. Okay. Okay, any other questions? I, <clears throat> the only other change I'd like to make is the 351C7 to go back to the six months, not the 90 days. Yeah. yeah. I would agree with that. So the, the, the time frame, yep, then the also two. the length. The time frame, yeah. The trailer, just no length. Trailer. I just like to stop it after one trailer. Again, I think that's easy enough to still enforce because, you know, we'll, we know we'll hear about the nuisance or whatever the problem may be. And we can, you know. Right, and these trailers will st still need to, to be licensed and sure. be able to be right. on the road, so. <clears throat> okay. 
Okay. Well, a motion to be in order to uh, okay. I will so move amend. that we adopt an ordinance. Oh, hold on. I, th oh. I, th I think the Johnsons are here and yeah, would like to speak. Oh, oh, okay. Comment. Yep. All right. I, ret I retract those words. No, I'd just like to say uh, thank you to the planning committee and the commissioners and all those who have helped on this. And my questions have been, oh. Your name? Uh, Dan Johnson. Thank you. Uh, have been, the only concern I had was the six months going to 90 days because <clears throat> I've got one part right now that I'm 14 month, 14 weeks out before I can even get the part to start on it. So I, it just kind of would cripple me if it was that short of a time frame, because a lot of times you have to get a, a, a part in before you can find out what all's wrong and then we still have to go from there to fix it. And so that was my concern. And uh, like I say, I appreciate uh, Peggy and the planning committee and all those who have helped with this to, because it is helping me definitely. And I appreciate that and the commissioners. I think the only thing you, you do is like they do camping up there where you have 14 days to camp is you just move it off the property for a day and then move it back. <laughs> well, <laughs> the clock again. So that some seems of, to be that would routine. be okay in some cases, but some of them cases are pretty tough to do. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> We, yeah, if we see a family pushing a swather. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, this is Bryce. And I had one more uh, clarification. On the, the trailer length, if you look at that section uh, under home occupation, we have two subsections that address a trailer length <coughs> yep. for all home occupations in general and then the one for I'm only business. I, and, I, and I was going to fix that in my motion because I'm talking about D2 as, again, okay. with a Class 7 rating vehicle. Got you. That, that's, you know, the one ton's not going to be able to pull necessarily i mean somebody wants to ruin their truck try and go ahead oh, so transmission i i will uh, move that we adopt the ordinance with uh, a state in number two with the following changes in section 3-30 d2 to edit that after the and one trailer period so getting rid of the rest of that and then in 351 c7 going back to the original six months that is uh, out and remove the 90 days from date of intake. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second um, with some changes. All in favor, say aye. 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 That passes 3-0. All right. Now to number number four. We had this one last week, and for us again, boy, the week went fast, didn't it? <laughs> Let me get there. Richard, you coming up on this one? You can come up too, Andrew. And Sean, or you can all come up for whoever's all that coming matter. up. <laughs> you just state your names. State your name. Maybe you can state your names now, and then we'll know. But Richard Nielsen, Public Works Director. Andrew Jackson with Mountain Land Association of the Governments. In case you had any questions on 5912-2218. No, nope, we're fine on that one, I think, after reading through it. Sean Elliott with Mountain Land. Okay. Um, does anybody want us to all start, I guess, unless you want to start well, or anybody? Uh, the only thing is on the thing that's marked, I know we've talked about, we talked about last week adding things, but on the thing that's identified that we are approving this list, it, is not identified on the projects below funded list that we are, what funds they are. Right, there, there's, there's two projects and it's in the staff report that was listed uh, with that as well, uh, not on the, the chart, but on the staff report that went to regional planning. The two projects that are, that are before you for county funding are the Elk Ridge Drive project. I can tell you what number that is here in the 19. Oh, at 20, sorry. 20, 20 and yep. 22. At tw 20, the Elk Ridge Drive project and 22, the Provo Lakeview Parkway Phase Three, in the amount of 1.6 million, because that was the the dollar amount that was available. So the request was for 6.2. The full 6.2 is not available. When it went to regional planning, it was uh, recommended that the 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 1.6 that's available be approved for that project and move forward so they could they could start. And then as other funding were to come available, then that could come at a later date. So, so the only real question I have now. Uh, I like those projects, don't get me wrong, is the one that I would like to see pulled off this list. And this one bothers me just in 
principle is number 12, the Orem 1200 South, 400 West roundabout improvements. Not because that's not a valid thing, but it was originally, if I remember right, part of the BRT and it got pulled for funding. You can step, is this not the right one? Okay, it, that was the other one it, then that they approved. It, there it, there it, was it, a roundabout it that got pulled on the funding and then they got it put back in through this process. Was, or was that this last funding cycle that they approved that on? This roundabout in Orem, it, it, I don't think it was ever part of the BRT. It, it, then it, that's it, not it, this it's one. On, it's on the route. It's yeah. on the route. But it, it, is. Not, it wasn't part of the BRT right. project. So. so that roundabout is there today. It was not right. designed correctly. And now they're wanting to fix the westbound traffic and go 35 miles an hour through it and fly into the campus. And so that's <laughs> it, it's a, a safety design, issue. So. so, But they applied for that before. Okay. The, the, the BRT, they were going to build it after the BRT. I just know there started. were a couple things got pulled out of the BRT project that then Orem City then put back in and they got approved. Now it so could have been on the, this next year's. And um, there is a quarter of that. Goes through it. Circle that is funded through some of the BRT funding, okay. but the other three quarters is like Sean had said. So we okay. designed it wrong and now we're gonna spend another $3 million fixing a problem. We wonder why we have a deficit in road spending. Okay, the same. That's a, that's a discussion for a, another day. We, got, much time we got an interchange so. up north that is, okay. needs some work too. We got some that was <laughs> disastrous. It's it's disaster. <laughs> I know what yeah. they do to a politician that did that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, my. I know Mag does not do the designing, by the way. So for those who are watching. <laughs> Neither does the county engineer's office. Yeah, Richard Nelson <laughs> at no. <laughs> I would like to, uh, oh, go ahead. I just, I think last week there was a question on the 59-12-22-18 in the county commission's role and if they had to approve the whole project list or if they could do project by project and we can do project by project. Yeah. I just clarify that. Yeah, okay. Um, I don't have, um, in looking down through this personally, I don't have any problems with the listed projects that are on there and the ones that we're funding. Um, but I, I would like to put on there, this is just meat spot speaking, see if another one agrees on it, that all other the projects on there are actually wiped off. We don't, we don't want to consider any of the other projects that are on there in case they come back and they say, we don't need this project anymore, but we'd like to take it to a different project. Um, so that I know we have lines on there saying not these additional, there's no funds available for the line down below but there's lots of times that I've seen where a project they think is the hot project, and maybe this is the second point, if for some reason these projects in the future come out where they're, they don't want them, the ones that are county funded, and, and they say, oh, that's not the big priority now, now I wanna move it over here within the city, that we put some sort of stipulation on there that that means it needs to go completely back. The, there is actually the already uh, part of the, the process uh, through MAG for both county funded projects and MAG funded projects. Yeah, that's the problem though. So projects. through MAG and then the mayors vote on it and we don't get another bite of the apple. And so what Commissioner Lee, if I, I understand, we're yeah, trying to like have to another have bite of the back. apple It comes back on that for approval, approval for, for the county yeah, on that. If, if, it, if it's the county funded it project, it, it, has to. Okay. it has to come back to you for, for the change. So. Right. Okay, I just and want to make sure that that's that that, the, that happens. Yeah, because the whole Orem City getting side oil, and, and I feel bad I'm picking on Orem. I'm not really. I it's a beautiful city with a lot going on, but last year we had to vote in the summer. They had a project that was approved and a project that never got approved for like six years, and all mm -hmm. of a sudden they come to the mayor's and the mayor. Mayor Brunts comes up and says, we really need this sidewalk that no engineer ever voted for and gave them votes. It was on the project funding list for several years and all of a sudden it got put through. That's part of the process I think we're trying to address here. Yeah, so one of the things that, and these are, these are all good points and things that I try and think over frequently in my head, how can we solve this and one that I've put out there to several politicians and if any of you have an idea on it is the one where like sorry to pick on public works but it's just an example public works puts in a truck into a budget 
and then they decide they don't need that truck. But then if they don't get the truck, then that money goes to another department. And so they might as well just buy that truck out of the budget because they don't get any incentive for saying, actually, we don't need the truck. Does that make sense? And so mm -hmm. we have that with road projects where we've got a road project that's a good thing. And then something changes in the meantime from the approval process to the construction process and something else is a better project. So we have the example um, eight years ago of the um, Murdoch Canal Trail, where that was a great project. There was gonna be some local funds in there and then economy tanked. And in order for the cities along there to be able to pay that local match, they would have had to um, fire employees, fire police officers, right? And that wasn't a good idea. Well, we had some excess CMAC funds that had not been obligated and not been applied for that could go towards that project and cover that local match. And so we met with everybody we went through and they thought that was a great thing. Of course, that project had originally been approved. Another one is the west side connector from the freeway out mm -hmm. to the airport. That one, I couldn't have imagined in my lifetime it ever being approved because of the environmental challenges. Well, then what happens is Obama opens up the fast lane on environmentally held projects that if they had the funding, if they had the design, but they were just lacking the environmental, then they would allow them to go if they were shovel ready. So it was a Friday evening, got a call from Carlos at UDOT that said, the President of the US wants to know, is this project ready to go? I called Provo, I called a couple of other cities, called some of the mayors, and they had to know within you know sure. half an hour that we could come up with the funding. And so we said, yeah, go ahead and do that. And then we went back to Marathon. But it wasn't problem. a higher, higher priority. There were other projects that were higher priorities, but everybody saw that that was just that window in time. So that's why we kind of want to sure, but look at things. There's going to be a the, few exceptions. The part that, be the that is the rub on that is the cities think this is their money. And, and what your guys' charge and our charge is to always assess overall need of the county. And that's, I think, what yeah, we're saying. And that's, we're not yeah, blaming you for yeah, that. Yeah, and that's the thing that it's hard to figure out a way that you can have a city say, okay, we don't need this project, so we're going to turn it back in, and it's going to go to another city versus going to remaining in our city on a better project than the one that we got approved in their mind, right? And so that's what everyone wants to do is they say, well, if I turn this back in, can I get this better project approved for my city? And we say, well, it's lower on the whole thing. Well, then they say, well, then I will just go ahead and do my project that isn't my top priority instead of turning that money back in to be divided up and also doing theirs. And we had that with a See, So that goes back to my yeah. other <clears throat> recommended change to is if we found a way to weight these projects based on our master plan that we publish and give it a weight, then the engineers, although they have a vote, it would fit in what you guys are doing because there are roads that you know people turn in right. that you're thinking, no, and it scores high because everybody thinks it's a great when they go yeah. on the bus tour. Yeah, but then, then what happens is things change between sure. when something's approved. So you have like the Highland, um, trail that was approved it was high ranked everything like that in between the time that it was approved just a very short couple month period the legislature took away the power of eminent domain for trails so they had one property owner along this whole strip who would not wasn't a willing buyer seller and so that stopped the whole project that money was sitting there in limbo for many years while they tried to work this out with the property owner, it wasn't happening. And so then they had, in Highland, they had another trail that they wanted to use the money on, so they returned the money back, and um, they were given a portion of that back to them to f fix a, another trail, but then the majority of the money went back into the pool of funding. Otherwise, Highland could have just sat on it for 15 years. Um, but but, but see, that, that. that goes to my point. They were given money back to fix a trail, that wasn't on the approved list. It was. And it all was. of a sudden, oh, oh, we, the we've been, yeah. last year we went through this thing where we tried to tell everybody, vote for Prop 1 because we are short in funding. True, we are short on funding. Right. But part of that is because we're designing poor roads. Cities need to be held more accountable because they're designing poor roads. Admitted to, we all know we're doing a project that was poorly designed. In fact, there's a roundabout in Springville that, in my opinion, allows for too quick a speed at the top of 4 South. Not yeah. very well designed. 
Uh, but then we're also going and we fund sidewalks that the engineers are saying, no, half a million dollars worth, or it's just 50,000 here and it's half a million dollars here, but that pot adds up and all of a sudden now you have a road because the school district adds. I mean, that's the other thing is Nebo uh, next year on their bond is gonna have seven or eight new schools. You know what that does to you and Alpine does the same and because of the growth, it's a great problem. But if we wouldn't start throwing some of this money at bad projects, we could yeah, fund and that's some the thing. Those. That's what we have is something that was a good project one year, isn't four years later may not be the right. best, but there's no incentive for a city to turn that money back in because they lose X amount of millions of dollars. That's why if we wait so, them based on the master plan that you guys designed on all of the fun, on all of the models then there becomes incentive because it fits. Well, yeah, and we redo that every four years. Right. So at one year, it may be a great thing, but four years later, there may be other projects that are better. Sure. Because, within that same city. Because we, yeah, within that same city or other cities because they've got new development going on, big businesses coming in, things that we don't know at that time because there's secret negotiations going on between private businesses, et cetera. Sure. And then they announce, and they announce just after we did something, and now then that becomes the new priority. Well, we, do we say, nope, you had this project that was approved four years ago that was the best project, so it's gonna have to go. The city realizes that if they turn back the money, they quote unquote lose money because then it would go to the project that's right behind them from four years ago and not this new project. So that's the one that we really struggle with trying to keep in time sure. with what's currently um, needed with also the requirement that in some cases it can take 15 years to get a road well, that's, that's one built. of the reasons why um, all those that are not funded on this list it I mean we've to. talked about it and that's the reason why I'd like to say that that Utah County doesn't um, agree to these because four years from now when they're looking at it and some money's come back they say well let's go back to the list and then the next one yeah. gets, gets funded or uh, something of that nature because it was approved uh, as a as a list. Yeah, it's the only thing would be like say say like with the West Side Connector, where it wasn't on any priority list. Um, it didn't rank very high, but because of a very small small window in time of only a couple of weeks, that they um, wiped off all the environmental concerns and gave them like a 30 day period to state their case environmentally the core it was opened up if we would have done this then we couldn't have gone back and funded that in a short period of time it was on a list but because, it wasn't high priority because the commission can still approve it inside a 30-day window we ratify well stuff, but if, if you're if you're making a motion and saying we will not approve anything that's below this line on, a, oh, on an automatic basis. Yes. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, sure. No, we, okay. we just okay. want yeah. to readdress them yeah. with yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. So you can understand, like, here's the reason right. why this right. needs to be done. Okay, okay. To me, yeah. I okay. feel like I'm we're sorry. actually yes. in partnership and saying the same thing. Okay. I think we're yeah. trying to give yeah. you the avenue to help you guys okay. do what yeah. you as, know works. As long as there's that opportunity that yeah. if a window opens that is shutting that and everybody yeah. agrees. Because we want to open it up and say there, there may be others that are not on this list, but we don't want to say this okay. list takes priority yeah, over other yeah, things that yeah, are going yeah, on. But yeah. it gives you okay. and Sean okay. and all your staff the ability to say, no, this project yeah. does yeah. make more sense yeah. and it's push just, it. Every time somebody says, okay, we're not going to do anything, that, and then it seems like two weeks later, sudden something comes up sure. and we say, oh, this would be great, but we just said two weeks ago, we're, okay, yeah. I'm with you. That would be fine. Yeah, yeah, as long as you can do that on an ad hoc basis for those individual projects. And if, and if I could, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to state this, if I could get support, um, I would actually put in there that uh, this the county's the county's money here when we're talking about that CMAC money because I know that's part of the discussion for future for this three million dollars for the BRT mm -hmm. in there. I mean, I would I would be willing to go ahead and say if the cities want to go with the three million dollars for the free fare for the for the BRT, then the county money is in jeopardy. Um, for some of their projects, if they if they want to vote that direction, just because um, of how Richard will spend it, he knows how. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I, I mean, I feel strongly <laughs> enough about it. I, I stated on the last one. Uh, I get I get hit all the time at the very beginning with this BRT, and I'll state it once again for the record, Renee, that uh, we went through this whole process, and all I heard the whole time was Bill, 
the modeling, the modeling tells us this is such, this is the best thing ever. And we're 30, 40% through now and they're saying, oh, whoops, the modeling stinks. There's no way we're gonna have that kind of ridership unless we go out there and, 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 uh, and give it away for free. And, and yet we have it going on, the subsidization that's going on now is way more than 85%. When you got Provo giving away passes and you got others that are giving away passes, UTA gives away passes to their board members. You know, for, I mean, the subsidization is huge. It's a lot more. And so I, I, I don't like that. Um, yeah, and, and I appreciate that. And you'd stated that back, I think, in March and then yep. stated it at the um, regional planning back in March. We're continuing discussions um, with uh, state's uh, transportation governance board and looking at all different ways to fund all modes of transportation. One of the things that they look at is, is this something to do with reducing congestion? I think that's one of the things we look at is with say BRT, end of the day, what do we say is a success of BRT? Is it that it makes money? Is it that it runs- BRT makes money? Yes. Oh, he's he's yeah. asking, oh, is he's this, saying, are these oh, questions? Okay. Is, is, that, is that what we say if we say okay. success is that BRT makes money? Okay. Or do we say success is BRT runs on time? Which we can say if they pick up nobody, they can be very accurate on their time, <laughs> right? Because that's the thing is we can run a very accurate, efficient system if we didn't have to pick up people all the time. Is it taking people off out of their cars and getting onto BRT? Is that success? And so that's something that we have to ask ourselves, like we do with every project, whether it's this roundabout, is the success of the roundabout, is it to keep what it was success now, and as people go right 35 time. miles, <laughs> that's what we would assume, right? 35 miles an hour through there, is that success, or do we modify it so that something else is success, so we can get through traffic, through it, uh, without delay, but not at high speeds. And so, we go through all of our projects and look at those and say, what is success and what do we do? And sometimes when we have a project out there, it's adding a right turn lane or it's adding a double left turn lane once we get out there and it's going and reality happens. And so that's one of the things that we want to do is just continue that discussion. Is well, the only, the only leverage that the county has, because obviously there's more mayors that sit on the MPO than there are commissioners, and, um, and they could, they could vote for this CMAC funding um, as you've as, as you've stated, I, I don't know if the if the, the votes are there from talking with the know. mayors. I mean, I ta talking with the mayors, they're pretty upset as well about a lot that's going on. But the only again, the only leverage that the commission has is with this money. Yep, um, that's it. And and so um, you know, as I as I've mentioned before, well, you know, I'm ups I'm, I'm upset that we're trying to uh, make this a free fair zone for two years or whatever the case may be with it, it always gets met with, well, yeah, but you're one of only three votes, you know, in the commission. If, even if the whole commission goes that way, the mayors can supersede it. And so uh, that's the reason why. But they uh, can't supersede the county funds. But they, but they can't supersede <laughs> the county funds. And if we were to put in there, yeah, you want to go that route, that's fine. Which you can, they all want. They can go that route. Um, then you're going to have to give up this, this part of it. That's the reason why it, it's, it, it's enticing to me that, you know, maybe some, we put something like that into this, where it says, you wanna go that route? Fine, you have to pick and choose. So there's one other um, part to Commissioner Lee uh, talking about the subsidization that, that never gets talked about to the cities that I think now is finally becoming a talking point through like pr uh, Proposition 1 that we had. Sweet. <laughs> um, and that is the one thing that UTA doesn't they are allowed through vote to take the quarter cent sales tax that they get to run oh, the operation. first quarter yes and the second obviously um a large portion problem is, is even if they get those people in those buses they run empty they run full doesn't matter to me irregardless to use my favorite term <laughs> for richard the real word is regardless right. but <laughs> Ir irregardless. i want to make sure richard understood me <laughs> Ir yeah, irregardless sounds so much better <laughs> regardless uh, the reality is, is UDOT drives on the roads, puts a lot of road mileage, and doesn't have to pay for any of the wear and tear. Their O&M is not reimbursable UTA. to the cities. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. UTA, yeah. did I say UDOT? Sorry, sorry UDOT. Uh, <laughs> UTA does not have to reimburse through O&M to the cities, and so, although they are transporting people, keeping them off, they are also 
causing the cities, you know, mm -hmm. more right. repair work. And so maybe there's a way to find that. But anyway, so, okay. Good. Thank you. I don't know how to do, do the motion to. Well, maybe we should bring it up here for discussion. What would you, what would you. I'm okay with doing what, uh, you, I'm okay with making the motion to do it. Like you said, I just want to word it right. Maybe I'll let Dave try and help me with that then. What part? So, so if parts? we uh, exclude all of the others, uh, as far as at this time not approving, but upon approval at a later date type of thing through MAG and the County Commission. Would that be the, the items below item below. number 22? Yep. Well, is that what uh, am I not 19, right? 21, 23, well, and on? Well, right. 20 and 22 are the two that you're right. 20, at, right? 19, 20, 19 and 21. 19 don't have and 21 are, were already approved by regional right, planning. Right. We don't have county money. Right. So you, you'd be looking yeah. at anything below item number 20, 22. Two, that's correct. correct. Am, yeah. I, am I understanding right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Not excluding 20. Just no, just, just you be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> are you running for mayor up there no just kidding <laughs> no no i'm as close to political office as i ever want to be <laughs> so if you want to help me with a motion that would work on the county funding yes mm -hmm. either clear well either way you'd like but it, i would suggest you just do it by number okay reference the number then i will move that we approve the following items on the 2016 TIP project selection, those would be based on the uh, county funding, uh, number one, number four, five, six, 10, 11, 12, 14, 20, and 22. And all others not approved at this time until further notice. I'll second. Any consideration for amending that and saying that if they, um, for discussion, if they want to go with the funding for BRT, that the CMAC funding? I've already told them. So I've said the same thing publicly too, to them. So you want to put that in a motion or you want to keep that out? I'll amend my motion to do that. Second. Was that a second? Yes. Okay, second. Okay. Okay, I got a motion and a second um, to approve the funding as stated with the numbers and, and also with the, uh, the CMAC money in the future, um, how that would play out with the, with the cities um, and also the MAG funding for those road projects if we were to go down that, that route. All in favor? Aye. 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 That passes 3-0. Keep in mind, the projects on the CMAC for this funding list I fully support. They yeah. are they those to me. That's these are good good ones. uses that fit the master plan. Okay. All right. The agreement now. Finally, I see the mayor's here too. <laughs> <laughs> are we there almost? You think? Are we close? <laughs> We're close. Okay. Um. We've gone back and forth. This is an agreement annexation between uh, Utah County and Alpine City regarding the Alpine Cove subdivision. And I'd rather talk to the mayor, Robert, not. <laughs> <laughs> Should, yes. But I wanted to just highlight what changes I made, if I yes. could. So I was uh, informed that there's a couple of changes I need to make, um, particularly uh, related to Utah County. And by the way, I'm Robert Moore, County Attorney's Office. Um, Utah County will be making the improvements or the two inch overlay to the subdivision um, as part of this agreement. And so what I've done is I've, I've modified section four of the agreement to state that, that the county would do a two inch overlay of asphalt over the existing asphalt roads within the subdivision <coughs> and as depicted on the map. And I, sorry, it doesn't have a map attached, but I, but uh, Richard's Richard Nielsen provided me the copy of the map, and basically it's all the roads within the subdivision, including the cul-de-sac proportions, et cetera. Um, <clears throat> the, what I did do, though, because there's one issue here, um, if this annexation doesn't take place within the next little while, we're going to miss this season. Um, basically, for asphalt, as I was informed by Mr. Nielsen, that uh, if we don't have asphalt down by November 1st, well, we, we don't we don't have it this year. We should do it before November even. 
So the, the point is, though, we, we, we can't really do that until we get the annexation done. Right. So um, while the mayor is here, I would say it's imperative that we get this ball rolling and get it done right, right away um, so we can get that asphalt on. If we were going to next year, then you, know, you don't know what costs are going to be like next year. Um, so it's, what I did is I, I put, a, I put a, a spot in here that the obligation of that section would not exceed a certain amount. And that way that the county doesn't have a blank check here. I did not state what that amount is. I know we anticipated that the asphalt would, would run for this year at about 170,000 is what we've anticipated. But if we go into next year, you just don't know where it's gonna be. And so I didn't know if you wanted, I think it's, it's advisable to have some sort of a, a, a top line here so that you don't have a blank check to do this if, if asphalt triples we ever had costs. asphalt increase more than 20 percent in a year really so so i gotta ask you a question on this because i i don't want i don't want the city council to stumble over this sure with this having some top number on there but i, I want it i want this to go through sure um but uh also i see the risk that we have as as well with it yeah, and that's my um, job to protect against right. that risk just a road. If everything worked perfect, it should just, you know, if yes, it, we should be able to go through and, and, and get it taken care of. And that's what we anticipate too. Um, obviously, you could amend that number. That, that was going to time. be my question. Why can't we just put the 170 and we can amend it if necessary? Or even if you want to go to a little slightly yeah. higher than that, you can I mean, do that too. I, I mean, that, my personal feeling would be we simply put in the anticipated cost and then if need arises that it needs amended. It's yeah, we, and you can certainly amend. do that. This is your agreement. Um, obviously, if it's approved by uh, Alpine City, they would also have to approve any amendment to it. But if, it, if you're gonna amend it to increase that amount, I don't see why they wouldn't. Why they that. would have. So, so let me ask you on the annexation then, once, once we've sent this through, and I know there's a process, gotta go, you know, the governor's office, all that kind of stuff, the lieutenant governor's office. Um, it has to be a first go through the city and the city has to approve it. Um, do, are there any, are there any stall points for us or are the stall points now on, on the city side? Once the agreement's approved, um, we have some provisions in this agreement that everything's tied to the annexation being completed. By state statute, the annexation is not completed until Lieutenant Governor says it is. Right. And so that's, that's where the money comes in. We're, we're obligated. Um, we would obligate it also for the, for the asphalt. After that happens, we would um, also be obligated to, uh, to uh, quick claim the roads over to the city as well. Right. And that all occurs after the annexation. So between now and, and the annexation, I can't think of anything off the top we, of my head that would, would be on our construction before quick claiming the deed, right? Or quick claiming the roads over. Correct, because we don't want to have to quick claim them right. and then have to ask permission from the city to right. asphalt it. So, Just want to make sure. Yeah, so the, the idea was kind of a sequence. First of all, the money after the annexation is complete, we would give them the money for the water infrastructure um, within 30 days. We would also asphalt within 60 days of the two inch overlay of asphalt. And then within 30 days of that asphalt being completed, we would then um, quick claim the roads, which would require us to, to have a deed basically to do so. So let's assume their city does it. What's our timeline from the state right now? What are they averaging? Are they a 30 days or are they? Honestly, I'm not sure where Alpine is in their process right now. So, so that, that's part I don't know. And that's, I'm glad the mayor's here can, can address that. That's why I asked the state where the state the state, uh, you know, once they get it, then they should return it back to us right away. We can even push it with them a little bit to make sure we, it's usually just a matter of checking the box really with the state for the most part. Mayor, do you want to make any comments? Sure. Any questions for me before I sit down? Thank you. Nope. Thank you for your work. Must be nice to do something that the city likes for change, huh? <laughs> well, we love the county, don't you? <laughs> At least I do. Uh, just a couple of comments first. Hey, thanks for your support last night on a wildfire above Alpine in Fort Canyon. County County engine showed up. They, it was wonderful to have them. I'll tell you, I was standing there just wringing my hands because Fort Canyon is a one way in, one way out right at the present time. And it was full of people. And if it had gone, we would have had fatalities and lost a lot of homes. And, I, and it was the support of the county engines and uh, some of the local folks around there that saved us last night. 
And then I went to bed about midnight and felt a whole lot better about it. So thank your people through the system, if you would, please. Uh, where we're at in Alpine, we have, we have come to, to the point of all it takes is the, the ordinance and the vote to uh, approve the annexation. The, uh, the, the residents have come in with their petition. The petition has been accepted, approved, and gone through the, the necessary uh, time ta uh, table that it takes to meet the ordinance in Alpine City. So we're into that process right now. What I plan to do the minute you make a vote here is uh, meet with their homeowners association, which has not been active for about 15 years, but all of a sudden found themselves a voice, which is great. We appreciate that, and we have dealt with individual citizens there in um, in the, our county residents in the uh, Cove, and they're the ones that have brought forth the annexation petition with adequate uh, names and uh, property values. So that's that's where we're at right now. Uh, I plan to put it on the. Um, uh, uh, probably be the second uh, city council meeting in uh, this month in July and uh, we'll move forward with that and we'll have the ordinance ready for them to, to, to for the city council to make a de determination which I think is uh, would be approved so if we put that hundred and seventy thousand dollar in that blank line <coughs> um, you see that being any problem with the city council I don't see it as a problem because what it represents is your commitment to go ahead okay. and do the asphalt and that's and uh, that's uh, all that's the big concern there. The water connection, which is we feel is a, is a safety issue and should have been done a long time ago personally because their system sometimes has a little problem. They have three wells and the one well seems to go away when the creek dries up and the other wells are in a fire flow situation meet the, meet the uh, requirements, but uh, uh, adequacy may be tested with, if, if we had a serious situation at their farm. So okay. Good. Well, let's just get it done. That's how I feel about it. I was okay. on the city council in 1983 when it didn't get done. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mayor. All right. Any other discussion? I move, move that we approve and authorize the annexation agreement between Utah County and Alpine City uh, with $170,000 inserted as the blank amount in section 4.2. Second. I've got a motion and a second as stated. All in favor say aye. 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 That passes 3-0. There you go, Mayor. Let's get it signed. I was going to amend it and add box elder and. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, we have, uh, we need seven, eight, and 10 for closed meetings. As far as I know, unless there's any others that you know of. I move that we approve and set a date, time, and location for a closed meeting for a strategy session to discuss the purchase, exchange, or, or lease of real property, water rights, or water shares for today's date, this location, following the completion of the regular agenda. Second. I've got a motion and a second uh, to approve and set a date, time, and location. Um, as stated number seven, can we also uh, put in there kind of a, a, a second to that? This, that this, this will, will also have a meeting at 11 o'clock on Thursday um, for the same. Oh, yes. With, with a meeting, with an, an additional meeting for Thursday at 11 o'clock. Is that what, Dave? Yeah, that's tomorrow. Oh. And that would be in the commission co uh, conference room? In the commission, the commission conference, conference room, room yes. Okay, second still the second. second. Yeah, I've got a motion and a second uh, to approve that with the, uh, the the added time on Thursday, 11 o'clock at the commission conference room. All in favor say aye. 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 That passes 3-0. Move that we approve and set a date, time, and location for a closed meeting for a strategy session to discuss the sale of real property, water rights, or water shares previously publicly noticed for sale for today's date at this location following the completion of the regular agenda. Second. Got a motion and a second to approve a set of date, time, and location as stated number eight. All in favor say aye. 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 That passes 3-0. Whether we strike regular agenda item number nine? Second. We got a, a motion and a second to strike agenda item number nine. All in favor say aye. 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 That passes 3-0. Whether we approve and set a date, time, and location for a closed meeting for a strategy session 
to discuss pending or reasonably intimate litigation for today's date at this location following the completion of the regular agenda. Second. I've got a motion and a second to approve a set and set a date, time, location as stated number 10 on our regular agenda. All in favor say aye. 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 That passes 3-0. We have no work session items. Is there any public comment? Britton Lund, Bookmobile Program Manager, Utah State Library, State of Utah. I brought you each a couple of um, their flyers on how to use our online databases. There are 10 of them, so I know that exceeds your needs, but um, maybe there are others in the office that would like that. Also, there's, there are two, RB Digital and um, Overdrive. And also, you need a Bookmobile Library card to use it in the way the instructions are given here. You can also get to it through the Orem Library, Provo Library, the community libraries that are in your county, but the instructions are specifically for the Utah State platform. Um, I spoke with, Commissioner Lee, I spoke with your administrative assistant. He said you needed a couple of weeks. I just want you to know that I'm open to any communication, anything that you need from me to help you all make the decision. I also spoke to my director about because we are out of contract now and working without a contract serving your county. Um, she's comfortable with going on for a couple of more weeks. That's what your assistant said you needed. I just wanted to let you know that and give you an opportunity to ask me any questions. Okay, yeah. thank you. Um, uh, maybe we can speak afterwards, but um, also there was a couple of things you were gonna do um, that we haven't seen yet in the way of talking with some of the mayors and others and getting some information from Mapleton. Well, I'm sure that um, your last five or six days have been yeah. a little a little <laughs> different than usual. Yeah. And I have a feeling that your city mayors have had that same yeah. situation. We've seen them. It wasn't, it wasn't <laughs> easy to get in contact right. with people. Yes. I did make contact with everybody that we spoke about okay. in one way or another, not necessarily speaking with them. So a couple more weeks may provide some opportunity for that as well. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. You just, okay. Any other public comment? Okay, seeing none, we'll we'll move into our, our closed meetings.